Jesus. You may never heard of him, but his name is Sean Morash, who is kind enough to not only do his morning show with DA, but then come back and sit in with us and talk sports. So thank you, Sean. I I'm pumped it. up, Evan. I'm a fat Cam Thomas here to give us 33 <laughs> points here on a Craig Maintenance Day. Let's have some fun. Now, for those of you who are like, who the hell is this guy? This guy put out one of the funniest videos I have ever seen a couple of months ago. Now, it made these guys very upset, I have to admit it. But it was a video of his raw excitement after the Giants won in week one, that shocking victory on the two-point conversion. Do you have the tape there, uh, Big Mac? So the audience can understand who this gentleman is. All right, play the clip. This is right after the Giants defeated Tennessee week one. Yeah, which, by the way, thank goodness we did because Sunday's relevant because they did. (laughs) No kidding. Here is what Sean was caught doing on his ring doorbell camera. Holy f***! Finally! Finally, little f***ing opener! Holy God! Let's f***ing go! <laughs> Dude, it's been three months. I still find this thing to be the funniest thing ever. My dog Eli has never gotten as much air time in his life barking uh, there. Yeah, I mean, that was a big moment, Evan. They had not won an opener forever. <laughs> And you got these two dopes who thought it was staged. Because, oh, they still do. Yeah, because you can't be excited if your team wins. No, no. You, you only have to tweet things like you're a you know a big Yankee supporter every time they do something wrong. Like Mac. <laughs> it's the only way you're a true fan. You can't yeah. yell on your stoop. No, you can yell on your stoop, but just don't you know don't try and pretend like ooh I got caught on my ring camera. Uh, like I you were did. Un- like you were unaware the who put the ring camera. Yeah, we're you know three exactly. minutes. Let's on, be honest. Chris, Come Chris, on. we're three minutes into me. I didn't. Here. I didn't open the show this come, way. I didn't come, open the show this come way. Come look at my phone. Yeah. I'll yeah. give you my passcode, okay? okay? And yeah. you can tell me if I have the Ring app on my phone because that's all my wife. And do you think that she wants me getting any more attention? She basically hates me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Big Mac, yeah. I, I, uh, can I defend my co-host for the You day? can try. Um, do you have a Ring doorbell camera by chance? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay, so do I. Yeah. I forget that it exists. A hundred percent. Like, yeah. I know it's there, and every once in a while, my wife will say, right. oh, we expecting a delivery? Why? Because a car just pulled up with the Ring doorbell camera. Yeah. If I was outside doing anything, in fact, recently I was outside shoveling the leaves, and all of a sudden... Shoveling, shoveling the leaves? leaves. I think you have seasons confused. What do you do uh, with the leaves? You rake, rake them. You rake them, or, you know... The truth is, my father-in-law was raking the leaves. Yeah. I was sort of watching and helping. Oh, as yeah. it was what do you do? The two-hand open the bag for him? <laughs> Who are you on? Security guard duty there? <laughs> yes. I was opening the bag. But as this was happening, yeah. my wife hit the little button and started speaking to me. Yes. And I was like, where the hell is this coming from? I forgot it existed. Right. I didn't even know you could do that. You could speak to somebody through Yes. This? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, no, you're completely oblivious. Chris. So it's a nice little act you got going on. <laughs> Chris, it and you know what's shock really, you, you know how what's really, little I do around The idea that you're able to pull off stupid so well should really like be like uh, It's not that far of a stretch yeah, from, trust I mean, it's, me. I'm, Chris, I'm impressed. Luke Gower has been to my house numerous <laughs> times. Luke Gower, does it look like I know what's going on back you there? Have no, much like me, you have no life skills and your wife does everything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I can do the laundry. I can make a decent piece of grilled chicken. I have no idea what's going on with the ring camera. I don't need the ring camera. And oh, by the way, I heard you when that, he looks right down at the camera. Well, the camera's located, doofus, right above the <laughs> handle that I need to touch to open the door back up to get back in. So, yeah, I did look right so back So you down. took that little personal when people accused you of being fake. I C-Mac especially, because yeah. he's supposed to be a diehard fan like me. Right. And the idea that you wouldn't understand being a giant Running fan, that kind stoop, of reaction. screaming and th- thanking Dude, the they heavens? they no. for five years. And they then, beat the Titans in the opener. Well, yes, I, you're screaming. So let me ask you a question, though. So your, your wife posted the video then on Twitter, the camera. No, my no. wife oh, sent did. it. Time out. Okay. My wife sent it to me. My father, who I couldn't watch the game with because my daughter had the flu, which is the other reason I was yelling outside because I couldn't do it inside. She sent it and said, look what your idiot son did. And I was in the text. And I looked down at it. And I said, oh, this ended up being pretty funny. Let me put it out. But I didn't do it to put let out. Let me tell you, Morash, I'm completely on your side. And let me tell you, I, Big Mac, oh, I don't talking. know if you know this. I don't know but, this. And I got accused of the same thing. Not nearly as funny, by the way. Yours was, was one this, of the funniest was things this ever. Was your naked uh, video yes. at night? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a naked video of me. Yeah. Wow, I found out about a naked video about you the same time you found out about Justin Verlander. I had no idea about this Verlander <laughs> thing. Does anybody listening know that Justin Verlander and Kate Upton were involved in a... A tape? Ev, I can Does assure you even Harvey and Dix Hills knew about that. <laughs> Dude, I had no idea. Yes. Does How could Craig, you not know does that? Does Craig know about it? I'm sure he does. Yeah, That's I mean, right. I don't know. I don't know like if eight, he does. It was like seven, eight years ago. It doesn't matter if it was seven, eight years ago. You're telling me that he wouldn't have referenced it upon the Verlander signing just even once in passing. He wouldn't have said that I, one time. 
The guy lives on OnlyFans. You're telling me he wouldn't have mentioned it? <laughs> Unless he's sitting on it until he implodes in his first start or something like that, <laughs> stashing it away. I, if I had to guess, Craig was probably one of the first three clicks on that picture when it right. came out. All three of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was a video that 100%, I'm being honest, I, I think you know Big Mac, I wouldn't lie to you, where I was watching the draft in 2018 in our bedroom, mm-hmm. and I had my shirt off. I wasn't naked. I was just shirtless. And as the Jets were about to pick, you know, my wife knew how nervous I was and how much I wanted Sam Darnold. I right. own the mistake. We all wanted the guy. But I wasn't sure they were going to take him. So my wife very quietly pulls out a camera and films me and my reaction to them taking Sam. Now, obviously, Big Mac, once she showed me the video, it was up to me what I wanted to do with it. Yes. And I had to make a decision. Is this something I'll burn or do I think Izzo, because specifically Tom Izzo, who runs digital around here, would it be something good for the station? Because to me... And I think I've shown this with Craig. I don't care about embarrassment. You don't care about embarrassment. Certainly not. If it's good for the show, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I had him pour milk on my head for the Islanders to change the juju. Right. Okay? So, yeah, to your point about did Morash post the tweet, yeah, he probably had to make a decision once his wife said, hey, look what I I found. I'm I'm not an idiot once I watch something to know what good content is. I mean, some of it may not all be good. You know, Chris, look, just have your wife post you eating Chex Mix watching the Yankees and Mariners at 1 a.m. <laughs> and then maybe we'll have a good video out there for you to get a few views. We'll call Probably the big not. lead. We'll have him put it up as you yeah. pick through <laughs> right. and see whether you want the pretzels right, or not. Right, exactly. I was just going to say, my wife caught me picking out the pretzels. And I'll post it. <laughs> I, I think our concern is, because me and Sean go way back, he's a good friend of mine. I think he's got a lot of talent. We don't want uh, Sean to become a whack packer, which he is already down that road. You don't want to be known as, like, I'm a Jolly I'm a Giant fan. I do these videos. Are you know what? My pants. You don't want to be that guy. You got talent. Oh, Luke, You're you better go, than that further than me. Have a little shame, I just thought, on, man. I thought the, all I thought was the wording of my wife caught me was funny to me. That's oh, all. Don't. I got on Big him Mac, for the my wife caught me. Big Mac, you were just telling me the same thing off the air. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> we get on the air. Yeah, he backs off real quick. Like I, you're running for office The here. word whack pack never came out of my mouth. Uh, well, I've never I heard that term in my life. Excuse me? Oh, wow. fellas, you're not concerned Howard about Stern? his future. You were jealous that he had a video that was hilarious. There's no jealousy. And for no. anyone who heard that video for the first time when we just played it, I guarantee you left because it was freaking funny. And it was hilarious. Way, most of the comments on there were giant fans going, I can relate. Yeah. Because that's how important it was, which, by the way, ties into this freaking weekend. <laughs> right. You need yes. that game. And I do want to make this declaration, Evan, before we really get cooking here. Kind of take a page out of Craig's book. I am here today with Craig's Maintenance Day to save football season in New York. How are you going to do that? The moment I sit in this chair, the luck changes. Oh, great. The Giants win. The Jets win. Let's go the next So that's hours. the plan. You're going to yes. take all the credit yes. both teams win. When Craig walks back Monday and we have both wins for the New Yorkers, it was me. It was it you. It was me wow. that changed the fortunes in New I'll York I'll tell you football. one Craig thing you could definitely, one Craig shtick you could definitely steal, and that's Giant fans for Jetsies. Giants fans <laughs> for Jetsies. Because you need us this Let's weekend. Let's go. Uh, we'll get your calls in a bit. Real quick, last night. The Yankees did sign Carlos Rodon. Are we happy as Yankee fans? Are you good? Where's he batting in the lineup in the playoffs? That's your reaction? Well, no, look, of course I'm happy, and I'm happy that I can't say that the Yankees aren't spending. They signed Judge and Rodon, and obviously their rotation looks really good. And I'd say the biggest key is we've avoided a big Garrett Cole injury. This kind of protects against that if that were to happen. But in the end, they could roll that rotation out all they want. Are they going to hit in the playoffs in October? Because I've seen nothing to show that the lineup's going to prove. One thing. Well, one quick thing. Before I get Big Mac's opinion, because I'm sure he was just in love last night. You can fix one thing at a time before you get to everything. Yeah, sure. So the Yankees signing Carlos Redon, and I hate when people say it, and you just did it, so I got to call you out on it. Fine. I think uh, my old buddy Chris Moore did the same thing on Twitter last night, where the reaction is, well, they don't hit. Well, they, they made a move to improve their rotation. They essentially replaced Jamison Tyone with Carlos Radon. And we can get into the pros and cons of Radon because I think there is a mixed bag with him. Yeah. But to immediately flip it to, well, what about the offense? Well, well they're making one move at a time. Right. There. It's an unfinished product. But all I'll say is this. If they've spent this money on this and we get through and he's trying to navigate trades with Glaber, you know, Reynolds involved, something like that, and Ben Benintendi signs a reasonable deal somewhere else, I would rather have Benintendi in left field on this team next year than Rodon in the uh, rotation. Really? I really would. 
I really would. Because ultimately, Evan, and I know that you met fans, and I get it, are infatuated with how great your starting rotation is. Oh, so now you're going to take shots at us. No, it's not a shot at Met fans. But the truth is, watch these recent World Series champions. You need really good starting pitching, but you don't need the most elite starting pitching. You need them to be hot, but most importantly, you need timely at-bats and good bullpens in the in the postseason. And I think yeah, those two things to, are lacking. To, to argue at that point on this, the New York Yankees, and while I thought they were bullies, so I don't want to argue with myself here, but I got to be fair, the Yankees scored the most runs in the American League last year. The what Yankees, did he do? No, but hold on. And the Yankees hit a ton of home runs last year. Right. In the postseason, they did not hit. There's no disputing that. I think they hit 150 as a team. They did not hit enough. 100% that's the reason they lost. But it's also just hitting at the right time. Yeah, but at some point, it's not you know an outlier when it happens every year, with the exception being 09 since basically 2003. No, no, I, I get that. So you think there's something broken with the way the lineup is built that they need to change where they're putting up runs in the regular season, but all of a sudden, come October, they can't yeah, hit. I think it's just diversifying the lineup, which they tried to do, and Ben and Tenney got hurt, and LeMayhew got hurt. No doubt. We never and, saw the full Yankee lineup right, in the playoffs. a thousand percent. But now my worry is... You know, Donaldson's going to be out there. Are they going to play Hicks in opening day in left field? Well, yeah, yeah. But, but before you even get to that, we can't just look at starting pitching and say, eh, not as big of a deal as it used to be. It still matters. It matters. Houston Astros starting pitching was pretty effing good last year, dude. F, it matters. Let's and, not ignore that. And I'm not saying this is a bad I, – I love the fact that they signed him. My point is, if the if the offseason were to end and it's not over yet – right. The order of importance, I think the money, if the Yankees are truly on this budget, could have been spent elsewhere. By the way. Because I think I, their rotation is actually good enough I, if Cortez can replicate I that. actually agree with that. Like, I looked at their needs as being different, but they've improved their rotation. Definitely. And it's tough to compare Radon versus Andrew Benintendi necessarily, but I think Carlos Radon is better at his job than Andrew Benintendi is at his. Yes, it's Carlos just a matter Redon, of what's more important. Well, and it's also a matter of, and this is my big question with Redon, because he was a guy that the Mets talked about, especially after they basically kicked Jacob DeGrom to the curb, which is essentially what they did. Do I want him? And my concern with him is, can he stay healthy? He was utterly brilliant last year. There's no denying how good he was a year ago. The year before that, he was also really good, but he missed a handful of starts. Before that, he was never healthy. So you're signing a guy... And banking. And it's it's a gamble. Would I take the gamble? Yes, if I'm the Yankees. Right. Especially when you look at the alternatives. But you are banking and gambling on a guy who's never stayed healthy up until last year to stay healthy. Yes. There's a risk attached to that. I totally agree. But I also think that you're putting all these guys in a pot and assuming somebody's going to get hurt. Right? Cortez gets hurt in the postseason. As I mentioned, we've been really lucky with Garrett Cole's health. If one of those two guys, Severino, never healthy, if any of those guys go down, I think that this... The, the beauty of this, it's the ultimate 1A, 1B ace, but also a huge insurance policy to make sure your rotation no, is so strong. I see that. I see that. What would you think, Big Mac? Yeah, I, mean, well, I don't know how you weren't thrilled with last night. Yeah, of course. But I, I told you from the beginning, I, I put more emphasis on changing the lineup dramatically than I did the rotation. I looked at him as an extra piece. To me, once it was like for a week and a half, two weeks, we're getting Rodon. We're getting Rodon. We're getting Rodon. Like now you have to go get him because if you don't, it's embarrassing almost because they made a, a concerted effort. This was going to be the guy we see an upgrade in our rotation being uh, vital and something that's going to help us. And so they went out and got him. But I agree with Sean. I think they have to make changes to the lineup uh, still. But yeah, I was freaking thrilled through the roof. That rotation's arguably the best in baseball, one through five. Montas could could be the best fifth starter it's in baseball. It's a very good rotation. It's, a, it's an excellent rotation. It's a very good and rotation. And they're going to score plenty of runs because you know they do. And I think, you know, my problem is with people and just, uh, you know, what Sean and and because he's referenced, we've argued about Yankees and I'm a shill and all that. But what my problem is... <laughs> There's no argument there. Yeah, my problem is people think Brian Cashman... And I, I think Brian, people think Brian Cashman see the team a certain way and only a certain way and is stuck in that kind of way. When they went out and get a uh, Benintendi, they went out and tried to add Rizzo. They went out and tried to add Gallo to change the lineup. He ended up being terrible. But they try and, he tried to you know bring in some lefties, and he's out there trying right now to get rid of Donaldson. He's trying to get rid of Hicks. It's not an easy sell, but he's trying to change the team, and they're going to bring in someone to play left field. There's no way Hicks is the starting left fielder. No. Right now, Oswaldo Cabrera is the starting no. left fielder. By the way, I, I would be more okay with than uh, you he, would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Not good enough. How is that improving the lineup it's if not you're going to run out Oswaldo Cabrera as your left fielder? How I, is that? I do want to see Oswaldo Cabrera for a full year somewhere. No, he's no. going to be. He's going to be the Swiss Army knife yeah. who gets and a lot of ABs as a super utility Putting him yeah. some, honestly, right now at this point in his career, putting him somewhere hurts his value to me. His value to me is he can play everywhere. I don't want to see him every day in left field because I want to see him kind of well, But hold on, though. Even if he plays, in theory, every day in left field, you're going to see Stanton play the out. You will. Yeah. They're going to work Hicks or whoever else in. 
They, like, to me, he'll play three, four days a week. That doesn't mean every day. No, no, but that's that's basically what I think his role would be, which is he is not penciled in as your opening day left fielder. You have no, to add a left fielder. Yeah. And there's interesting options. You could re-sign Ben Benintendi. You could sign Conforto. You could try to move bad contracts and take Yelich back, which is intriguing, but I'd probably yeah. stay away from because he's tired he of doing moves like that. No, yeah. I agree. It would be – you know what that would be doing? If you made Donaldson, Hicks – prospects, and you got back Yelich and something else. Probably wouldn't be a starter now because your rotation is sort of set. You're just trading multiple bad contracts for another one. Right. You don't dump Donaldson for the next version of Donaldson. Right, because here's what's going to happen. Right now, you don't hate Christian Yelich, but a year from now, you'll say that Pete Davidson looking son of a... (laughs) He stinks. He's awful. What about the back of the baseball car that says he's an MVP? So you'll just turn your hatred that you currently have for Donaldson, and it'll turn into that Pete Davidson looking guy. You're absolutely right. And 99% of us will do that, by the way. It'll be C-Mac on Twitter going, well, you know, the guy did have a big hit versus the (laughs) Orioles in June. You gotta applaud Cashman. Uh, Never. I never said that. I'm all over getting rid of Donaldson. Donaldson sucked. What are you gonna do? (laughs) He hit him where it hurts. Yeah, the it hurts. I uh, defend Cashman left and right. Still, today is a good day to be a Yankee defender. Yeah. Sorry, that's it's just the way it is. You know, today's a good day. I, I also Steinbrenner, s- that's out the window. Well, Steinbrenner's too cheap. He doesn't spend money. He just spent to have a billion dollars. Also, Go cry about some other owner. Also, with contracts that could turn out to be bad. It's like if the Yankees had signed Carlos Correa, or the Mets had signed Carlos Correa. We all agree that a 13 year contract is stupid. In the moment when you get a better baseball player for your team, it's easy to say, yeah, the contract's bad. Yeah, the contract may backfire, but I'm better today. Yeah. And that's how I would look at Radon because, again, I don't know how healthy he's going to be. But at least for now, I just added a lefty to my rotation yeah. who had a dominant year a year ago. And if I'm a, I'm a Yankee fan, I don't know how healthy I'm going to be in six years as far as watching the not, team. Not, not, not healthy. So I'm focused on this. He's that's also it. He's also got good career numbers, A, at Yankee Stadium, if that yeah. means anything. And really against good numbers against the Astros. Yep. Yes. Don't worry. He'll implode the ASU. <laughs> You're becoming a Met fan. Yankee fans have become Met fans. Oh, in, it's, in it's become switched. Now the Met fans expect them to buy everybody. Yeah. We've all become what we despise. I, the Met true. fans in particular. Uh, let's go to Eric and Newberg. What's going on, Eric? Hey, what's going on, Evan? Big Yo, fan. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually going to the game this Sunday. A little bummed out, you know, that we got to see uh, Zach now. But uh, I want to get your thoughts on how that game's going to go and what's, uh, what do you think about Bam Knight and how he can affect this game. Dude, Bam Knight's the guy now. Bam Knight has become bell cow running back. I don't even know if we can use that term anymore because who's a bell cow running back anymore? Derrick Henry, yeah. your guy Saquon Barkley. But Bam Knight's the guy you want the ball in the hands of, especially with Brees Hall out. Michael Carter, after last week's fumble, yeah, you can't. By the way, uh, especially with Brees Hall. Out. How about especially with Zach Wilson in? Just well, being that, that, that safety outlet catch passes out yeah. of the backfield and cold day. Run me, the ball. Catch passes out of the backfield from Zach Wilson. <laughs> well, he had to work on something the last two weeks, right? Oh, that's where. Fundamentally broken, something changed in two weeks. What changed? I, he got enough. He got up to number two in the depth chart before the day. More than even an interception. No, an interception would be number one. The thing that may cause our last caller and other Jet fans to boo the most is when he bounces a simple screen. When he tries to throw a swing pass to Michael Carter and it ends up at his feet. Right, a check down pass goes in the sixth row. (laughs) (laughs) No, because that was really one of the big differences between White and Wilson. But you are right. They have to run the football. That's been their identity when they have clicked the most. They've got to run the football. What's interesting is Bam Knight, I think we'd all agree, okay, he's kind of earned that right to be the guy. James Robinson has lost any semblance of a role. That's basically been gone. And Ty Johnson, which made no sense because Ty Johnson played well against the Vikings. Ty Johnson was active on Sunday. Got, you know how many snaps he got on offense? 12. Looks like you had zero. 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 Just spitting a number out. I thought he was setting me up. No. I, yeah, I was setting you up for a zero. Now, one time was he on the field. I, I thought he was fine. getting the uh, the Kenny Galladay special. 12 <laughs> snaps. Nobody remembers any. Right. <laughs> the Kenny Galladay special. Oh, boy. <laughs> By the way, Jets are winning Sunday. Let's go. I don't want to hear that from you. Why? Because here's the deal. I'm with not a you. Jet hater. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I like you. No, I really do. I think you're a good guy, talented guy, all that. I'm setting you up to rip you now. Of course. You're a douche. And I'm going to tell you why you're a douche. I'm yeah, showing I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't know if you're aware of this. This is what we do. We <laughs> just we just make fun of each other incessantly. I'm not making fun of him. Yeah, I'm no, attacking no. We said him. Douche, that- you know, he said this, this we opened the show, I gotta come out and kill you. Like this is how this is how you, it works. So I just want you to feel comfortable. Do you comfortable. think I'm getting this opportunity because I don't know how to make fun of everybody <laughs> and take it back? <laughs> no, no, you can respond to this. Yeah. I want you to uh and this has to do with the Jets, even though it doesn't. On Monday, after DeGrom left, 
What did you do? Uh, I actually said, Met fans are going to be totally No, fine. no, what'd you say to me when I walked in here? What'd you do? I asked you how your weekend was. Yeah, with a smile on your face. Why'd you do that? Because I know you have kids like I do, and I want to know how your weekend was. Cut the crap. Yeah, the Nets beat the Pelicans on Saturday night. He was probably asking you about that. I, <laughs> why did you have, and this is my problem, why did <laughs> you, on a day in which I was in pain, and it does have to do with the Jets, and I'll tell you why it's relative, because you're a giant Yankee fan who doesn't like the other team in town. And on a day in which I had pain, I walked in here with a tear in my eye, you, who I like, but we don't say, you didn't say hi to me every day. I don't remember the last time well, you said hi to me. Well, I barely see you the exactly. way across paths. But you beelined it to me on that Monday to walk over with a grin on your face. You know what one of those grins are? You know when you're eating something that you shouldn't eat? One of those grins to say, hey, Evan, what's up with that? I'll tell you right now, Evan. Yeah. This is where you're wrong. And you could group all these teams together. You want to call me a douche? Met fans are team douche, and well, that's, well, what why. Happened how so? that's why. How so? And I'm going to tell you right yeah, now ahead. how so. Yeah. Because all summer, he playing the stupid air trumpets, showing the crowd, everything. Oh, Steve Cohen, he's going to outspend. Oh, you guys are second fiddle now. It's all we saw. Lakata screaming about it, smirking after every uh, Yankee loss in the overnight. All of that stuff going on. Jet fans haven't acted like that. You might be one and the same, but Jet fans during this great year, I haven't heard any of them going, we're better than the Giants, screw the Giants. And I don't feel that way. I got two brother-in-laws that are Jet fans. Don't, give, watch me, the games don't, together. don't give me the brother-in-law crap. I got a brother-in-law who's a no, Knicks no. fan. You think I'm rooting for the Do Knicks? Do you think there's a difference between this Jet team and the Rex Ryan Jets with all that stuff? There is, but I think that certain guys, and you're one of them, will always hold ill will towards what happened in the Rex era. And that dislike or that Not after kinda, Victor Cruz went 99 yards. Oh, that, that just cured everything. Best Christmas Eve of all time. Worst Christmas Eve that of all time. That changed everything. But no, I, 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 you don't have to believe me. I have not rooted against the Jets once. Lou Gower could back me up on this. He, we're in a little group chat where I'm the only one defending the Jets left and right every single week. So the Met fans are different. You all are So losers. you admit that. <laughs> so you admit that even though all the stuff you described about Met fans, I did none of, by the way. Yeah, You crossfire. still decided to take your anger out on me on the saddest well, day, one of the saddest days of my fair. fandom. Have me and you not had a DeGrom little behind-the-scenes work robbery, the Severino jokey stuff back and forth? Yeah. So this was the signal of the end of it. <laughs> by the, the way, end of it. By the way, here by was the way the today, I'd rather have Severino in New York because he's here. <laughs> the, the discussion we had, and it was actually kind of weird when you think about it, years ago. There were crazy rumors when Jake was winning the Cy Young that the Mets should trade him to the Yankees. It became a topic on this radio station where it would be, oh, would the Yankees trade Glaber and Miguel Andrew? <laughs> 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 Swear to God, it was a huge topic on oh, this wait, station. Texas, you want him? <laughs> right. I mean, that was a legitimate debate. Should the Mets trade DeGrom? Obviously, I was against it. I think Joe was against it. Francesa was like, oh, you know, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> Whatever happened. So I went to you and playfully said, if you get Jake, that's your ace. And you said, no, he's not. He's my number two behind Luis Severino. Sevy was and my that guy. obviously set me off because I was like, are you kidding me? Like, Sevy's good. And I like Severino. Jake's better. This is so, three Sevy injuries, too. Correct. Now Severino gets hit back down to earth, struggles in the postseason, starts to get injured. And I would remind you about Jake versus Severino. That's a playful, fun debate. The man leaves me at the altar. Okay, and you feel the need to? Uh, I deserve the smirk for that. Kiss I hadn't my seen ass. me in a while. I hadn't, <laughs> I seen, I hadn't in a while. seen me in a while. <laughs> That's fine. Alex in New Jersey. What's up, Alex? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Good. Hey, Evan. Um, just want to get your opinion real quick. Um, kind of paint you a picture. Now, Zach is you know, say for Sunday he's struggling moving the offense. Um, defense is playing solid. But, you know, obviously you're not getting any rest because Zach keeps having three and outs, <laughs> right? Now, eventually the defense, you know, may start getting, um, you know, restless. And obviously uh, Detroit's offense may start putting some points up. Now, if you're the coach, wouldn't you eventually, like, get Zach out of there? Maybe put, like, Strebler in? I don't <laughs> even know. First of all. <laughs> What, what, what do you find funny? We're going to play Shreveler now? Why? Because he played well versus Davis Webb in the end of the preseason? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he played well in the preseason. No, the reason why, even I would say dress Chris Shreveler. Joe would say dress Chris Shreveler. Our last caller would say dress Chris Shreveler is because Joe Flacco looked as if he didn't want to play football last week. Would you? It was freezing cold. Oh, you were on the bench. It. You've made your money. What? If I'm Flacco, I'm feeling like Chase Daniel here. I got to go in? <laughs> well, that's a problem. I, the issue is this. 
Chris Streveler is probably not an NFL quarterback. I'm going to say it a lot, a lot nicer than you are. He's probably not an NFL quarterback. What I think you could do with Streveler is you can make him active so that you can run a couple of gadget plays with him. So maybe he can make a play on specials. And if, God forbid, Zach gets hurt, then you go to desperation mode. You're not going to pull Zach Wilson for Chris Streveler, as bad as he looks. Unfortunately, this is his game. What do you look congested? I'm just, I just cannot believe we're even entertaining this comment. Gadget plays on special teams. We're gonna we're gonna have the punt protector out like Tebow was struggling. Right you now? you don't have you don't see gadget plays in the NFL. You think that's stupid? Especially when you have a quarterback that. So we can have him hold and run a fake kick with him. No, there's a lot of gadget plays you can run with Chris Strebler. on special teams. You I didn't special say teams. No, no. Uh, to dress for special teams as well. Gotcha. So he has okay. more of a role than just dressing right. as a third string quarterback. I'm not saying gadget plays on special teams. I'm saying gadget plays in the offense. And if I didn't. Uh, put that out correctly. My apologies. So that's okay. fine to call me out on that. Gadget plays on offense, and then he could also be a contributor on special teams and have him active. But you're not going to pull Zach Wilson as bad as he plays for Chris Streveler. You're just not. No, because if you you just told everybody that he was fundamentally broken, Zach Wilson, and now he's getting an opportunity to play due to injury. You can't say to everybody, we think he's ready to go, but say, but we also think Strebler should come in well, no, for gadget they, play. Chris Strebler was very close to being active. I think it was about a month and a half ago where he was promoted off of the practice squad, and he was going to be active for no reason other than, hey, we're going to run some gadget plays. Like, we're going to be creative with this guy. And then it never happened. They decided not to make him active. They didn't run any plays with him, and he's sitting there languishing on the practice squad. No one is suggesting Chris Streveler is like some kind of long-term answer. But if Zach Wilson is broken, as broken as he looked against New England, do you sit there if you're Robert Sala in a game you have to win at home against the Lions and say, well, all right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Just keep playing, Zach. Look, Flacco looks Is that what you would do? No, answer the question. Is that what you would do? No. I'd have to find oh. some kind of spark. Well, then what would be the spark? Bam Night Wildcat. Let's go. <laughs> well, you know what? We see a lot of that. I, I think that Chris Strebler has sort of become a folk hero for us because he did play well in the preseason. He outplayed Mike White in the preseason, as crazy as that is. But he did. And he's a tough guy. And he's like a guy that people want to root for. But he's not going to be the quarterback of this team. It's not going to happen. He's the RC Cola to Coca-Cola version of Gardner Minshew. That's what Strevler That's is. the comparison. Yeah, one way to get there. But you got there, Sean. I'm happy <laughs> you got there. RC right. Cola. By the way, you guys mentioned the Rex Ryan Jets. These Jets are headed that way. You guys threw a party when you beat Skylar Thompson. Sauce Gardner with the cheese ahead. Sala has goon tendencies. See? I guarantee you. No, and the Giants, Sean, you'll love this. Lunch pail guys. We'll see what the roster is going forward. They kind of have that lunch pail mentality. And the Jets are going to get real cocky, the players and the fans. You watch. Well, think about this. This will be the Rex Ryan Jets all over again. To back up your you know point, I guess. Robert Sala, and it didn't get that much attention, I think, because of the way it was worded. It wasn't worded in a soundbite kind of way. After the game said, we're going to see Buffalo again. Like, he did say that. We're going to see Buffalo again. Yeah, and next got- year, twice. <laughs> right, right. But he was implying this season in the playoffs. Yeah, they'll be watching him in the yeah. Super Bowl on TV. All right, thank you. I appreciate all these shots you're taking. But the point is, Robert Sala made kind of a postseason guarantee without making a guarantee. He should, because he just- they're winning Sunday, and they're winning Thursday, and they're going to the postseason. No, look, I got him making the postseason guarantees. I don't trust you. I don't trust your motivations. I don't <laughs> trust you. So you don't have to trust me at all, but you got me here till 630, so figure out a way. <laughs> 